a few months ago, some friends and I were playing an incredibly high stakes game of $2 poker. After losing 15 consecutive hands, my friend Cameron, more famously known as Real Michael Sarah, mentioned some interest in running a marathon. I, as someone who has never really run in their life, thought, what if I just did that? So, I did it. It was hard. Don't ask me how I did it, I just did it, it was hard. I just pulled up to the studio and laid it on the line. I just shot enough fish inside a barrel till I hit. Now I'm sipping on some shit you never heard of looking fine. <laughs> Son, I'm flying. Of course, I didn't decide then and there that I would follow through with such a monumental task. There were a few weeks of unspoken deliberation, where I sort of fantasized about the end goal of running a marathon, but I kept remembering the extent to which it would inevitably suck to prepare for it. I knew that it would mean a ton of physical exertion, but beyond that, it would also mean changes in habit and comfort. Nearly every day, I would wake up, take a shit, get out of bed, go to school, do stuff with people, ponder around, then rinse and repeat. It's important not to associate this routine with some sense of dissatisfaction or disappointment in myself, because I actually felt like I was living pretty well. Yet, I thought, I could continue to live well while also running. I have time for it, so it shouldn't affect my usual activities. There's no reason not to. This sentiment can conveniently be understood through a catchy and very original acronym, YOLO. So there's the change in habit. Waking my ass up because it's time to go beast mode. The change in comfort worried me a little, but it was too difficult to grasp what that would be like without actually starting. I think that I tend to hate starting any sort of creative project without knowing that I'll finish it. I hesitated to make this video, for example, because I knew I would personally commit to completing it. I just care too much and love too hard. This can be a good thing, because when I want to make or do something, I usually work on it until I'm completely satisfied with the results. But this sort of perfectionist approach can be a bad thing, because in some sense, it limits my creativity. I'm often afraid to experiment or take on new challenges if there's a chance that it goes nowhere. But enough of this. I pulled the trigger, knowing I wouldn't change my mind. I bought some shoes, found out they didn't fit, exchanged them for the correct size, then went on my first run. I can't lie, the first run sucked. I ran about a mile, going way faster than I should have. I almost passed out, so I had to walk the last part of it. Hi, I just finished my first mile after not running in months. It was difficult. I probably went a little bit too fast, but hopefully this is the toughest it will ever be. It was brutal, but it helped give me some perspective about the upcoming change in comfort. Willingly engaging with discomfort will henceforth be known as self-denial. I don't really want to focus on the existence of self-denial because frankly, it's a worn out and uninteresting topic. For our purposes, let's adopt a model of hierarchical pleasure, even if that's an enormous oversimplification. Hopefully, it's intuitive enough to see that I knowingly denied myself from lower pleasures in pursuit of higher ones. Instead of sleeping in, I would wake up and stretch. Instead of eating breakfast, I would tie my shoes. Instead of taking a shit, I would hold that shit. All of my typical pleasures were violently uprooted, and a million little injuries took their place. And yet, one must imagine me as happy. I'm the one responsible for this. I want to do this. I ran another mile. This time I ran so fast that all of my hair disappeared, and now my calves are very sore. But luckily today did feel a little bit easier than the previous run. I forgot to log my last run. Everything felt okay on that last one except for my right calf which started to feel a little tight. And the run I just went on today, it was sort of similar, but my right calf was even a little bit worse. So I turned in a little bit early. Once again, I forgot to log my last run, but it was pretty good. In a half mile, take exit 104 toward Patterson Avenue. Thank you. I ran three and a half miles. Some of it was walked, however, because I got a little bit tired. But even with walking, I was still averaging like a nine minute mile. So not too bad, I guess. Running again tomorrow, uh, sort of looking forward to it. Turn right on South Patterson Avenue. Shut the hell up! Slowly but surely, I became capable of traveling longer and longer distances. Some days were better than others, but my endurance noticeably improved within the first month or so. I ran through deserts, forests, oceans, and snow. It felt like nothing could stop me. During my time training, I was taking classes on Mr. Stottle and the old Spinotington. Some of their work was pretty insightful and seemed applicable to running. Of course, you might think my silly little chimpanzee brain was just searching for affirmation in a bunch of nonsense poetry. And to that I say, yeah, maybe, whatever. Let me be an astrology girl for a second. Every single thing endeavors, as far as it lies in itself, to persevere in its own being. Running 10 miles for the first time was a landmark of perseverance. 
I ran slowly but didn't walk at all and realized then that running a marathon would actually be achievable. I far surpassed my expectations that day, so much so that I cried in the shower that I took immediately after. I endeavored to maintain my pace just as I endeavored to maintain my being, because no thing has anything in itself by which it may be destroyed or which may take away its existence. I would continue to persevere unless something external, such as one trillion lions, were to stop me. This feeling of existential inertia is one I'm familiar with. It carried me through this, this, all of this. The list goes on. Looking back, the effort that I sunk into those things seems like an active pursuit for them. But, in another sense, the desire and effort emerge passively, since nothing in nature is contingent, but everything is determined to exist and operate in a specific way by the necessity of the divine nature. The world kept turning. I kept running. How's it going, everyone? I'm running, once again, clearly. Your eyes don't deceive you. The more I'm doing this, the less interesting it's getting. I mean, it is just running far. I have been slacking a little bit, but with about a month left before the marathon, it is time to lock in. So, wish me luck or something. Thanks. I'm maybe 11 or 12 miles deep into this run. I've been running, taking some breaks to walk. This is so difficult, but almost done. This will be 14 miles, I think. This is a walking part. My head feels like shit. My stomach feels like shit, but I'm very close to being done. Looking forward to it. So I'm done with that run. Got myself a delicious cold mug of water. Oh my God, it just kept getting harder. That was so much more difficult than I thought it would be. The last couple miles were just so slow. I wanted to fall asleep several times, but it's over now and I'm gonna have to do that twice for a marathon. Pretty unbelievable, but I still got a month. So I'll keep working. Hopefully it'll get easier. We'll see. I just ran again today. I ran a 5K at 7.20 pace, which is pretty fast for me. I'm very tired from that, but happy with the low number. The other day, do you mind? The other day I ran 11 miles at a 9.10 pace without walking, which is a lot more consistent and a little slower than when I ran a half marathon. So hopefully I can go slow, not have to walk, because walking and running and walking and running just makes you more tired, even if it's maintaining the same pace as otherwise. Just a steady, slow jog is definitely the way to go, as is obvious. And now I gotta go do other stuff. So, ciao. Hello all, today is glorious. I'm going to attempt to run 17 miles. That is an enormous number and I'm really not sure how well I will do, but I'll do my best, so wish me luck. So I'm about 11 miles in, got six and something left to do. Feeling actually pretty good. I haven't really walked yet, so very good sign of improvement. Um, going slow and steady. That is a half marathon done. A couple more miles to go. Now is where I'm starting to feel a little bit tired, pretty hungry, and sort of wanting it to end, but we're almost there. So close now, keep going. Holy fuck. Well, I did it. It was hard. I'm going to take a cold shower and recover. Hi, and furthermore, hello. Today will be my last run before the marathon. I'm gonna just rest the next couple days to make sure I'm all good to go. Of course, as anyone might expect, I'm a little nervous, but looking forward to it. I'm not sure what else there is to say. I'm gonna run 10 miles today. Um, I will let you know how it goes. I spoke earlier about changes in habit and comfort, but now let's look at change, generally speaking. I learned a thing or two from the rap artist known as Young Stottle. On his newest release, he says, nothing can come from nothing. 
all things come from something. To explain how stuff gets created, destroyed, or altered, something must always survive and something must vanish. Believe it or not, I can see myself in those few beautiful and not at all fabricated lyrics. To simplify, things have a set of potentialities. When a potentiality is actualized, the underlying matter loses its old form and gains a new or novel one. A sheet of paper has a potentiality of becoming a paper airplane. And when the paper gets folded in an airplane kind of way, it loses its sheet form and gains an airplane form. That's how a paper airplane is created. All creation, destruction, and alteration is fundamentally just change. I, as a human, had a potentiality of running. By actualizing it, I went through a change. My body survived the change, while the old form, let's call it chiller, vanished, and a new form, let's call it runner, appeared in its absence. And maybe here we can find novelty. The sense that matter taking on a new form is something bewildering, something to appreciate and to fear. That might be true, but at the same time, a change like this is no more surprising than a tree growing from a sapling. So here we are. The race is tomorrow. It starts at 5.30, which is a little bit too early. And I am quite nervous for no good reason. I have absolutely no idea how difficult the last several miles will be, but I will do my best. Yesterday when I drove down for the marathon, I did a little oopsie daisy and actually forgot my running shoes. That was terrifying, but very fortunately, somebody was also coming down at the same time and was able to deliver my shoes. So crisis evaded, the shoes are here, and that means that I can run comfortably. Anyways, it is time for me to go to bed now, so see you later. Good night. Aristotle also wrote about what a good life might look like. Surely everyone wants to live a good life, a happy life. Hopefully, it's intuitive enough to see that happiness is the highest human good, even if we don't really know what happiness is. Aristotle thought that to find the highest good of something, we must look at its function. For example, the function of a knife is to cut. The highest good for a knife is performing its function well, or simply, cutting well. The same applies to everything else with a function. For just as the good, for whatever has a function and characteristic action, seems to depend on its function, the same seems to be true for a human being, if a human being has some function. The human good, and so happiness, is performing the human function well. <coughs> Wait, what's the human function though? Well, similar to the knife, the function of a human is to do the characteristic activities of humans, or simply to live, as a human. This includes things like waking up, taking a shit, getting out of bed, going to school, doing stuff with people, and perhaps most importantly, pondering around, something essential to human beings. The human function is to live, so the human good is happiness, living well, succeeding, thriving, flourishing. Running is a characteristic human activity, so to run well is to be happy since living well and doing well are the same as being happy. So, it is four in the morning, race day. I ate a little breakfast consisting in oatmeal and a banana. Quite tasty, actually. Sorry, hold on. I have to leave in just a moment and head over to the start line with famous actor Michael Sarah. I feel pretty good and pretty ready. This is sort of something that I have put God damn it. This is something that I put a lot of time and energy into, and it's gonna feel pretty special, I hope. Okay, time to go. I laced up one more time and headed over. At the starting point, I joined a horde of strange people. Some wearing costumes, others not so much. Michael Sarah was there. After a bunch of babbling, we finally started moving. I started pretty slow, running the first five miles at about a 9.30 pace. I soon realized I could go a bit faster, since I was used to running around nine minute miles. By mile 10, I was still feeling good, so I shockingly jumped all the way to a sub eight pace for the next five miles, regaining some of the time lost at the beginning. This could be thanks to additional food and water while running, which I wasn't used to, or maybe I was just putting in more effort that day. I slowed down a bit, but maintained a decent pace for the last big stretch, 
bringing my average pace below nine minutes. Oh, 16, 10 left. Feeling pretty okay right now. I'm now at mile 21 or 22, maybe. And things have become pretty difficult. My right knee is hurting quite a bit, but I'm actually quite close to the finish. So, almost there. Yeah, Halloween, bro. 22. 22. And let's just say I went a little bit crazy on the very last mile. Whoa. So, I did it. I ran a marathon. My legs hurt all over, but luckily everything else is feeling pretty good. My toe turned a little bit blue. But besides that, I'm feeling pretty accomplished and happy and sad and tired. It started to get really hard towards the last few miles. It seemed like I was slowing down, running out of energy. Everything just hurt a little bit more in the last couple miles. Everything seemed to get further away towards the end. And by the time that there was only a half mile remaining, I just couldn't believe how far that distance was. But I pushed through made it to the end. Great success. Anyways, now I am very sweaty and smelly and stinky, and I intend on taking a shower if I can manage to walk to the bathroom. I give it like 50-50. There's nothing I love more in this world than watermarks. After all the time and effort I sunk into preparing for it, I achieved my goal. And they can't even give me a goddamn picture! What I felt at the finish line didn't completely surprise me, but it was much more severe than I expected. It was surreal in the best way imaginable. Now, I still can't help but wonder why I did it, or what I did it for. Was it fun? Was it good for me? Was it to prove something? Hmm. Who's to say?